Hey everybody, how you doing? It's been a while. So I'm going to start a, um, a new project today. I'm going to build one of those Rick McWhorter AM transmitters. I've seen Rick's video, which um, quite honestly is so old now that it's not clear. <laughs> it's very blurry. But I also know that John from Arkansas built one. And um, I was able to watch his and see what he did on his. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, if any of you want to build one of these, just look up Rick McWhorter and you'll find it. <clears throat> but here's the uh, here's the schematic and just a couple of things to point out here's an inductor it's uh, actually a toilet paper roll that you use and you do uh, it's got a center tap so 20 turns on one side 50 turns on the other total of 70 26 gauge magnet wire and then this is the one where you use the Quaker oat box that's a 4 inch diameter tube 155 turns 24 gauge and we'll get to that later. Then there's um, an optional meter, which I'm going to do. All right, and that's because you have a high power and a low power switch on this thing, right here. Maximum power switch. All right. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You've got a 6L6G output tube. You've got your 5Y3 rectifier, and you've got your S. 6SA7 mixer and um, pretty straightforward really not much to this thing it's pretty simple and you have a standard antenna and it even gives you the uh, the waveforms when you uh, when you have high power and low power so I got one of these chassis standard piece of all nothing nothing crazy so that's going to be the chassis I have the um, tuning capacitor from the um, Philco 84. Uh, that's the one that I turned into a guitar amp and gave to Sky Coral. So I'm going to use that tuning cap. Now on the specifications here, let me show you this real quick. It says that your tuning cap has to be 30 between 30 pico and 300 pico. Um, when I checked out this particular tuning cap, that's this one in the back. It's just about right. So the one I won't be connecting the one on the front. I'm just going to be connecting the one in the back. A couple of things to note on this tuning capacitor. It has to be isolated to the chassis, number one. And number two, you could have up to 200 volts up here. So I noticed when John built his, he put it inside a Tupperware container with a lid on it and just has a knob on the front. So I'm probably going to do something very similar. So mine is going to look something like this. And I'll have my um, my rectifier tube here or here, transformer, standard transformer back here, and then the uh, six SA7 and uh, and the six L6 output tube. So I've started to uh, to get everything ready. Um, here's the meter I'm going to use, and we'll take that out of the pack so you can see it. And I'll have to build a little case or something to put it in. But it's uh, you know standard Chinese issue. Nothing really crazy about it. You know, it looks something like this. That's going to be around there somewhere. And then the Quaker Oat container will be here. Um, there'll be a switch over here for high power and low power. I am going to put an indicator light here, a pilot light, and uh, and I may do a couple of other things. Put a, a an LED in there to indicate if it's high power or low power. I may do a few modifications on this thing, but by far this thing is supposed to be the best um, transmitter um, as far as you know whole house distance. Here's the antenna that I'm going to use. I'm going to simply mount that here somewhere in a box or something, so that would be easy. And I've already built. Um, let me show you this real quick. I've already built this coil. That's right here. Okay, so took a toilet paper roll. I've got the um, the 20 wrap on this side. Here's the center tap that comes off of that, and then this is the 50 on this side. And all I did was I poked a hole through the, the tube, made the wire come out of it in there, and then folded the ends over like you do with a roll of quarters. <clears throat> and that will make this thing solid. It's not going to go anywhere. So, um, so I already have my three wires here that I can connect underneath. And you see here on the schematic, this is your center tap, your 20. 
This is your uh, the, end, the one end of the 20, and this is the end of the 50. So I've already got this built. So um, the only thing I don't uh, I don't know what I need to get yet is this audio output transformer. I don't have any specs on it, so um, I don't know if there are specific specs that are needed. I assume it can probably be a standard um, output transformer like uh, like you would use on a single. 6v6 or 6l6 amplifier, tube amplifier. Um, so I'm going to have to see if I have something like that laying around. I know I have a few of them. So I'll see if I can uh, scrounge up something. If not, I'll see if I can figure out. And John, if you're watching, if you know what you used here, that would be helpful. So um, maybe I could uh, pick up one of those. So that's going to be the plan. So we're going to build this thing. Um, going to get the Quaker Oat container ready and start doing that coil. This one's done already. First time I ever made a coil, so that was fun. And I'm um, going to start getting this thing uh, going here. For the uh, Quaker Oat um, coil, this is a 24 gauge wire. going to use this here. So uh, we've got plenty of that, so we're in good shape. And then I've got a couple of other parts that I'm going to need. A couple of, um, you know, 10 watt resistors. This thing calls for a few of those. And um, that's about it. Let's see what else we have here. Here's a 10K ohm. All right. So... 10 watts, and, uh, and a few other parts. So that's going to be the plan. We're going to start building this. Uh, I'm going to do my layout on the chassis here and see where exactly I want to place things. And um, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to mount this. I'm probably going to drill some holes in here and then put some rubber grommets in there and then you know mount it with a screw in the center but keep it isolated from, uh, from this chassis. That's, that has to be isolated. And um, again, I like that Tupperware idea, John. That was good. So nobody gets electrocuted. So uh, especially with some cats in the house, that could be dangerous. So uh, so that's the plan. Uh, I'll come back when I um, when I have some more. This is just going to be the kickoff of the series, and um, and we'll we'll start uh, start building this thing uh, this afternoon and tomorrow. So we'll get it going. Anyway, uh, it's good to be back. Um, I was up in Boston last weekend for a wedding, a family wedding, and then uh, this past week I was uh, on business trip in North Carolina. So good to have all that junk out with, and now I can get back to this stuff. So anyway, this is uh, this is Ron. Hope everybody's doing well. See you later. Yeah, before we go, we're going to let John describe what this thing is. <laughs> You're a star, John. Hey, Rick McWhorter, AM Transmitter. Well, here it is. This is the uh, this is the RF choke, uh, of course, wrapped around the Quaker Oat box. <laughs> I put the tuner inside of a Rubbermaid bowl because there's about 300 volts on that tuner, and uh, just fasten the whole mechanism right down. The screws come up from underneath and screw right into the tuner itself. And then uh, the transformer I got from a friend up in Indiana uh, came out of an old Philco 89 from 1936. I believe it was. And here are the three tubes. You know, you've got your uh, rectifier and your mixer and your amplifier tube. And uh, this is the 6L6, and this is a, a 6SA7, and this is a uh, 5Y3, something like that. Uh, 5Y3. I can never remember numbers. I have a terrible time with that stuff. Anyway, it's just simply an on off switch with a. I put a 120 volt bulb. Uh, directly in the primary instead of a six volt bulb in the filament voltage uh, which is what the original design had and over here is a four gang uh, uh, RCA connector setup uh, they're all tied together I can plug it in here here it makes no difference they're all the same right there so I can put a, a speaker uh, headphone head jack into there which will feed this and eventually, uh, I'm going to give it a little more time to burn in and make sure it works. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a perforated board uh, under underneath of it and then uh, put four legs so it kind of gets it up off the table. And uh, this is, uh, <clears throat> let's see if I can get this thing to lift up here a little bit. This kind of gives you an idea of what's up underneath there. There's the infamous uh, Rick McWhorter. Uh, toilet paper roll with the oscillator wire around it and all the wires up underneath my wire I have about 50% 60% more wiring than Rick had in his it was because of where I the placement of the different components 
Uh, anyway, the whole mechanism right now is being fed from a, a double T. Okay, we're going to leave it there. So now you know what I'm building. So uh, anyway, I'll take take it easy, folks. See ya.